and let's learn how to eat right and exercise. Because that's really all there is to it, right? Eat right and exercise? I mean, there isn't a person in America who hasn't heard that advice a hundred times, is there? Eat right and exercise. That sounds simple enough. But if that really is the answer, why are so many millions of people out of shape? Why do so many millions of men and women perish painfully and sometimes prematurely? The way I see it, the motto, eat right and exercise, is to health and fitness what the expression, take it easy, is to psychology. Neither offer much of anything in terms of useful information. So is there really a solution, a real answer? And if so, what is it? There are a lot of people that really don't care, that really don't want to make a change. They just want to continue to deteriorate as they age. You must want to make the change. There really is a right way to get in and stay in great shape. The solution starts with mastering the mindset techniques to cross that abyss we talked about earlier. Then you must follow a specifically structured, integrated system of exercise, nutrition, and supplementation, the Body for Life program. Once you learn how to use this system, you'll be able to lose whatever amount of body fat you decide to shed. Once you apply the Body for Life program, you'll also be able to build and define your muscles, enabling you to completely control the shape of your physique. Once you learn this program, you'll be able to do just about anything you decide to do with your body. And mark my words, when you make that breakthrough, once you achieve that level of power and control over your body, you will simultaneously harness a level of inner strength you may not even know you possess. I never realized that my health had that sort of an impact on my attitude. And now I can see it so clearly. It means everything. When you're looking in the mirror and you see your body changes, it changes your self-confidence and how you feel about yourself and maybe how you view yourself or think other people view you. My energy level is equivalent to what it was when I was in my 20s. I know that I can accomplish whatever I set my mind to doing. But before we get to the nuts and bolts of the program itself, let's take a closer look at what eat, right, and exercise really means. Let's answer all those questions such as, what should I eat? When should I eat? How much and why? What kind of exercise should I do? How often? When, where, and why? Once we get these issues cleared up, we'll move on with the program itself. Let's start with nutrition. Think about this for a moment. Within a year, virtually every cell which makes up the body you have right now will be gone. No, that doesn't mean you'll be vaporized, and I'm not talking about Armageddon. The fact of the matter is, your entire body is completely recreated every year. Out with the old, in with the new. Your skin, your muscles, your organs, everything about you is constantly degenerating and regenerating. Right around age 25, that natural process of building up that your body has undergone since birth crosses over to a process of degeneration. You actually start breaking down faster than you're growing. A similar process occurs with all living things. For example, a tree grows until it stops growing. Then it begins dying. This is natural, but it's not inevitable. You see, unlike a plant, we can do something. We can adapt and evolve. We can change. We don't have to lose muscle and gain fat, feel tired, give up and give in as we age. We can look better. We can feel better. We can move forward and change in a positive way all our life. The question is how? Well, you know that old saying, use it or lose it? I've discovered it's actually true. I call it the law of nature. Use your brain or you won't be able to think as sharply or clearly as you once did. Use your muscles or nature will take them away. I knew that it, if I didn't do something, it was definitely going to be downhill. The mindset of a lot of people in this country is that when you start into your 40s and 50s, the best part of their life is, is over. And that's just simply not true. We actually have the opportunity to recreate ourselves if we decide to do it and if we know how. Now let me ask you a question. What do you think your body uses to recreate itself? Where does it get the raw materials to build all those new skin cells and brain cells and bone cells, even new blood? Well, if you guessed food, you're right. As it turns out, that old saying, you are what you eat, is true. And even though most everyone has heard that maxim time and time again, what I've discovered is that very few people really understand it. In fact, very few people are clear about even the fundamental aspects of nutrition. Here's a case in point. You know, I'll never forget the first time I sat down in my office to talk shop with John Elway. So I asked John, I said, what did you eat yesterday? 
Well, he looked around. I think he looked up at the ceiling, and then he looked down, and he said, I think the last time I ate anything, Bill, was yesterday afternoon. I had something to eat after practice. And I said, John, what was uh, that meal made up of? Protein, carbohydrates, vegetables. And he turned and looked at me, and he said, Bill, is a potato protein or carbohydrates? And I said, oh, boy, John, we got to talk. What I discovered was that John Elway, although he's an incredible athlete and a very intelligent man, was just as confused as everyone else about how to eat right. But it's really not his fault. It's not something we usually learn in school. We don't learn it at work, and most coaches and even most personal trainers don't know enough about it. And believe it or not, sometimes they know too much. They've read too many articles, studied too many textbooks, and gone to so many seminars that they're drowning in a sea of complexity and confusion. When it comes to nutrition, they suffer paralysis of analysis. And if they are not clear about what eat right means themselves, they can't teach it to you. Many of the people that I've worked with over the last few years are kind of like those trainers. They're so confused by all that information out there. It's coming at them from all different sources. So many experts seem to have an opinion about this, but we're not interested in opinions. We're interested in facts, what works and what doesn't. And what I do for them and what I'm gonna do for you is clear up all that confusion. Because you see, the good news is it doesn't have to be complicated. What I've taught thousands of people and what you're about to learn is that eating right is not rocket science. In fact, once you get the hang of it, it's downright simple. Once you discover the right way to feed your body, you'll never have to relearn it. Unfortunately, the vast majority of people in this country have absolutely no clue what they're doing to themselves with the food they ingest day in and day out. Nor are most people aware of how much better they could look and feel if they stopped feeding themselves accidentally and started intentionally recreating themselves with proper nutrition. The nutrition and supplementation and diet is a good 80% of making a physique transformation, it's very, very important. And once you start eating that way, and once your body has adjusted to not having all the carbs and all the junk and all the sugar, you at one point stop craving it. One of the reasons it's hard to get through to people and help them understand what it really means to eat right is because there's just so many myths out there. What we want to do now is separate the myths from the facts so we can clarify this issue. Let's separate fact from fiction right here, right now, once and for all. Okay, here's the myth that really drives me crazy. To lose fat, don't eat. The fact is, to build a lean, healthy body, you have to eat. One of the most crucial errors people make when they attempt to lose body fat is severely restricting calorie intake. They stop eating, and that doesn't work. You see, if you try to starve off unwanted fat, you're playing a game you can't win and your body will fight back by significantly decreasing the rate at which it burns calories. This is one of your body's survival mechanisms. It lowers your metabolic rate when you starve it. So when you start losing that body fat, you also lose muscle. You begin to feel tired, you begin to feel weak, and you sometimes get irritable. Not only that, your immune system suffers. You develop nutrient deficiencies and literally thousands of metabolic reactions that should be happening miraculously in your body every second of every day misfire. To make matters worse, when you do start eating again, which everyone does that goes on one of these low-calorie starvation diets, you gain all the fat back that you lost, and as a special bonus, you gain more. That's because you've turned your body into a less efficient fat-burning machine. When you lose that muscle, you lose the ability to burn calories. What I discovered is that it really is possible to lose fat without losing muscle. In fact, you can lose fat and gain muscle and improve your mental and physical strength at the same time and you can do it in as little as 12 weeks. But to make that breakthrough, you have to work with your body instead of against it. You must let go of the myth that not eating is the right way to lose fat. You must accept that you need plenty of good quality nutrition to build a better body. When you start eating the right way, I promise you'll see and feel the difference. Okay, here's another myth. If you exercise, it doesn't matter what you eat. The fact is, when you exercise, it matters even more what you eat. This myth is at the root of a big problem in America. You see, even though more people are exercising now than ever before, more people are not getting results. And they're beginning to give up on exercise, which is just so disappointing for me because taking that first step, actually going to the gym and starting to move your body and exercise is a big step. But you know, that's not the only step. That's just a one and a big one-two punch of exercise and nutrition. What I see are literally millions of people who are completely overlooking the fact 
that physically active individuals need more nutrients than their sedentary counterparts. Exercise and nutrition, like the mind and body, are linked together. And that brings us to the Body for Life program, which is an integrated system. And what I mean by integrated is that it's complete. It's multifaceted. It's a complete solution that takes into account all the essential elements to transform the body from fat to fit or from fit to fitter. Mindset, nutrition, exercise, recovery. When you take away any one of those essential elements, you no longer have a solution. You no longer have a complete integrated system. You merely have a piece or two of the puzzle. And that just doesn't work. Believe me, folks, I've tested this thing every way to Sunday. And the bottom line is this. If you don't have the raw materials in your system to rebuild from the micro damage caused by intense exercise, it's like you've got the lighter and you're flicking the spark, but you have no butane. You have to have both, the fuel and the spark. By not becoming a victim to the myth that exercise alone is all you need to get fit, by accepting the fact that optimal nutrition is just as important as exercise, you'll be one step closer, make that a quantum leap closer, to achieving the level of success that you rightfully deserve. Okay, let's take a look at another myth. Eating right means three square meals a day. The fact is, believe it or not, the right way is eating six times a day. If you look at how humans evolved, you'll see that our long lost relatives were what I call frequent feeders. They weren't bingers. That means they ate small amounts of food frequently throughout the day and they didn't sit down and eat great big meals infrequently. The fact is, the right way is eating six times a day. And now I know that might seem hard to believe, but you can actually eat more often and lose fat faster. And it's one of the scientific facts that's out there that is just being covered up by this myth that three square meals a day is the best way. The fact is, to transform your body, to look better, to feel better, to improve your health, you must develop the pattern of eating frequently throughout the day. I call it grazing. You should never go more than a few hours while you're awake without eating. You must eat six meals a day. And I think another part is to eat the right things. You can never allow yourself to get out of control, to get hungry. If I were to skip a meal, it would be nothing at all to suddenly go into a binge and eat things I shouldn't. There are many reasons for this. One is that eating often helps keep your body's food alarm in check. It helps convince your body and your mind that it is not going through a period of famine. Also, studies show that eating often helps accelerate the metabolism, so you burn more calories. And when you graze, when you eat six nutritious, smaller meals a day, the food is more efficiently absorbed and processed by your body than those three big, clunky, old-fashioned American meals. In fact, when you eat every few hours, you'll have more energy, less hunger pangs and cravings, and I'm certain you'll just flat out feel better, a lot better. I was very fatigued before. I felt like I couldn't do anything. I laid around. I was very tired. Now I have energy, I have motivation, and it just changes your outlook. Okay, now that we've addressed that myth, let's expose another. High carbohydrate, low fat diets work best. Okay, the fact is America is getting fat and sick from a carb overdose. You see, all these people out there have been told that they should lower their dietary fat intake and that carbohydrates are a great replacement. But see, this is not the best way to get lean and healthy. It's not the best way to ward off many of the health-related problems that are being caused by how we eat. Folks, the bottom line is this. If you want to lose fat, you want to get healthy, and you want to get the fastest results you can from the amount of time you spend exercising, we're going to balance protein and carbohydrate intake. We're going to minimize fat intake, and we're going to feed our body frequently with the quality nutrients that it needs. You want another myth? All right, how about this? You have to count calories to know if you're eating right. Okay, the fact is, you should count portions, not calories. I've learned that most people in the real world don't count calories and never have, they never can, and they don't care about it. They won't do it. It's impossible to keep track of it. Even I can't keep track of it. So what I did is design the Body for Life program to fit into the lives of real people. I developed a solution. What we do is we count portions instead of calories. So what's a portion? Well, a portion is the amount of food that's roughly equal to the size of your clenched fist or the palm of your hand. For example, if a baked potato is about the size of your clenched fist, that's a portion for you. If a chicken breast is about the size of the palm of your hand, that's a portion of chicken for you. As we just discussed, on the Body for Life program, I need you to feed your body frequently. I need you to eat six small meals a day, and I define a meal as a portion of protein and a portion of carbohydrates. 
It's really quite simple to follow once you understand the portion rule. Okay, here's another myth. If you eat right, you don't need to take vitamins or supplements. The fact, scientific studies show many of us do need to take supplements. Supplements have become so popular among athletes and active, health-conscious individuals that I feel it's very important to gain at least a basic understanding of just exactly what we mean by supplements. Consider this. Even if you had all day, every day to do nothing but shop for and prepare the freshest, healthiest, whole foods that you could find at your grocery store, or if you had a full-time personal chef to do it for you, you still couldn't be certain that you were getting all the nutrients that your body needed to recover from exercise. What scientists have discovered is that the nutrients found in two identical-looking oranges can be completely different. I've used supplements every day for the last 10 years, and I recommend them to every single one of the athletes, actors, and everyday people that I help with this program. The reason is because taking vitamins and supplements takes the guesswork out of providing your body with optimal nutrition. And remember, if we're going to make rapid progress on this program, we cannot have our cells misfiring because they don't have one of the essential nutrients that our bodies need. Okay, here's another myth. You'll know when to drink water because you'll be thirsty. Well, that's not exactly true. The fact is, your body needs a lot more water than it's telling you. Water is the source of all life. And healthy muscle is comprised of over 70% water. It serves a vitally important role in all cellular activity. But most people just don't drink enough. They think that they should only drink water when they're thirsty, or they drink diet soda, or they drink tea, or they drink coffee. I'm talking about good, clean, pure water. You can drink it with your meals. You can drink it in between meals. I don't care. Just drink it and drink it often. I'll drink a little more than a gallon of water. I always keep a gallon of water with me and sip on it all day. I never drank juice or um, sodas. I made sure that I wanted to keep my system working as efficiently as possible so I consumed as much water as I could. You would think the body retains a lot of water, but actually when you drink a lot of water, it flushes your body out, which is great. Now that we've discussed the myths and facts about nutrition, we've learned a lot more about how to eat right, let's talk about exercise. Once again, what we need to do is separate the facts from the myths and bring some clarity to this issue as well. So let's get started. Here's a myth that I have just about gotten sick and tired of. Aerobic exercise is better for getting in shape than weight training. Okay, look, here's the fact. If you want to transform your physique, you have to train with weights. Walking around the block or simply climbing a flight of stairs or doing jumping jacks is better than doing no exercise at all. But folks, the best type of exercise for anybody is weight training. You see, through resistance exercise, we can not only sculpt and build the body, but you can also significantly increase the metabolic rate. That's the rate at which your body burns calories. Aerobic exercise does increase calorie burning, but only while you're doing it and for a short period of time afterwards. However, with weight training, you increase muscle mass, which means you burn more calories, and you can change the shape of your body. So if you start an aerobic exercise program and you're shaped like a pear, the best possible result is that you end up looking like a smaller pear, which is fine if that's what you want, but that's not what I call a transformation. You see, through weight training, you can shape and sculpt the body, building broader shoulders, a more narrow waist. And did you know that muscle takes up five times less space than fat? Studies confirm that weight training not only helps you burn fat and build muscle, but it strengthens the heart, it increases the bone mass, lowers cholesterol, and can even help you extend the active, fun years of your life. All right, here's another myth. If women lift weights, they'll look masculine. The fact is, weightlifting is the best form of exercise for women who want to change the shape of their body. So if a woman were to replace the amount of body fat on her thighs with muscle, it would be smaller, firmer, and stronger and even more feminine. You see, women who worried about bulking up with weights need to understand this. It's your body composition that determines how you look. It's replacing fat with muscle that allows you to transform your physique. A lot of women have the misconception that if they work out real hard or lift weights, that they're gonna end up like the Incredible Hulk with big muscles. At first, that's what I thought too, but now I know that's just not gonna happen. Instead, weight training helps you to lose body fat and get lean and firm and, and even healthy. The bottom line is any woman who's interested in losing fat, gaining strength, increasing muscle tone, and transforming her physique should be weight training. Tens of thousands of women have successfully completed my transformation challenge, and they look beautiful. There's nothing masculine about these women. 
And if I have anything to say about it, the number of women who work out with weights over the next three years is going to triple. It's just the right way to exercise. People are beginning to understand that women should be training with weights. I could see results in about four weeks. It was like the fat was just changing. The muscles started developing and I could actually see the definition coming out. It was amazing. The number of women using free weights in America has more than doubled in the last decade, from 8 million to 17 million. This proves that if they're given the opportunity and the right information, women will cross that abyss we talked about earlier much better, much faster than men. Women should be more concerned about not having enough muscle than rather too much. Okay, here's the next myth. Weight training is only for athletes and young guys. Okay, the fact is men and women of all ages can benefit from weight training. You see, if we don't work out, we lose muscle mass as we grow older. And believe it or not, this process begins kicking in right around age 25. This is when most men and women start seeing their body fat levels increase. From their early 30s to their mid-60s, the average American man's body fat doubles, going from about 18 to 36 percent. In that same time frame, the average American woman's body fat can bulge from 33 to 44 percent. At that same time, they lose muscle mass. Okay, so we get older, we get fatter, we get fatter, we lose muscle mass. We lose muscle mass, we lose strength. We lose strength and, well, we just get tired, fragile, weak. We can't do the things we love to do. But this doesn't have to happen. We can recreate ourselves. And weight training is one of the best ways to do that. And this isn't just my opinion. Recent university studies show that people in their 60s and 70s can build muscle and increase their flexibility by up to 200% by weight training just three times a week. The fact of the matter is you don't have to have some advanced level of fitness or some special skill before you can begin weight training. No matter what your current level of fitness is, whether you're a beginner or whether you've been working out for years, you're ready to step into the weight room right now. As a matter of fact, I think it's more difficult to start an aerobic exercise program than it is weight training. Here's another exercise myth that causes a lot of problems. The more exercise you do, the better. All right, the fact is, more is not better. You know, this is one of the myths I fight on a daily basis. You see, on my program, you only exercise for four hours a week. That's it. That's all you need. And despite what so many people believe, working out more is not better. It's really not. In fact, my best workouts are only about 20 to 45 minutes. I don't think anyone needs to work out for more than an hour at a time. The exercise program that I recommend is brief, it's intense, and it's very effective. With this program, you can stimulate fat loss, you can build muscle, you can improve your health. You can completely change the way you look in as little as 12 weeks with this program. But I'm constantly asked, how can so much be done in so little time? Well, you need to accept the fact that weight training exercise is not an endurance event. The objective is to stimulate your muscles, not annihilate them. You don't get extra credit for putting in extra hours. In fact, you get penalized for it. That's because your body, my body, and everybody else's body has a limited ability to recover from intense exercise. Your workouts should provide the precise amount of stimulation needed to trigger an adaptation response. And for that, you only need to exercise with weights three days a week. All right, here's another myth. Muscles grow while you're working out. The fact is, muscles grow while you're resting. It's between workouts that your muscles repair themselves, growing stronger, and firmer, and healthier. It's between workouts that you must fuel your body with the proper nutrients to feed those muscles. And it's between workouts that you must allow yourself the time to rest and relax to ensure proper recovery. Here's another myth. Lifting a weight is what stimulates muscle growth. Here's the fact. Lifting and lowering the weight stimulates muscle growth. You see, on any free weight exercise, there's two basic motions. One's called the concentric phase, the other's called the eccentric phase. During the concentric phase of an exercise, that's when you lift the weight up. That's when the muscle shortens or contracts. During the eccentric phase is when the muscle stretches. Okay, a prime example of this is the bench press. When you lift the weight up, you press it from your chest to the lockout position. That's the concentric or positive phase. When you lower the weight from the lockout position back to the chest, that's the eccentric or negative portion of the exercise. A lot of people forget that lowering the weight stimulates muscles. So they press the weight up real fast and they let it fall right back down. And that's a good way to do it if your goal is to get half the results. But if you want all the results, 
you have to press it up under control and lower it under control. This is a very important technique that we want to remember for when we begin our workouts. One thing I really did on this program was uh, because of the increased intensity by slowing down my repetitions, I cut down the sets uh, and my time in the gym, which was, was good too because uh, I'm busy. Okay, let's recap what we've learned so far about what eat right and exercise really means. We eat six small meals a day. We don't try to starve ourselves. We consume a portion of protein and carbohydrates in every meal. We drink at least 10 cups of water a day. We use supplements to help provide our bodies with the optimal levels of nutrients that we need day in and day out. And we perform weight training exercise. See, by now we've reached the point where we're ready to put it all together. You've done a great deal of thinking so far. You've answered questions most people never even ask. You've become more clear about your goals. You've decided to let the 12 weeks serve as a defining moment, a period which could divide your life into two very distinct time zones, before this and after this. Consider all the knowledge you've gained up to this point as the ingredients. Now all we need is a recipe, a specific plan, a step-by-step -step formula that eliminates the guesswork and puts us on the right path. It's a recipe that's taken me over a decade to develop and it integrates everything I've learned from countless hours of scientific research, personal experience, and the real-life success stories of thousands of people. Okay, now that we've separated some of the facts from the myths, let's take the next step. Let's look at how we're going to eat on the Body for Life program. But before we jump into the specifics, let me ask you a couple more questions. Hey, remember earlier how I told you that your body will recreate itself in the next year? Well, guess what? It's going on right now. It's not something that's going to start tomorrow or a month from tomorrow or when you hit your next birthday. As sure as you're listening to my voice right now, this instant, your body is in that constant cycle of recreation. With that in mind, what have you had to eat today? Okay, what did you eat yesterday? Okay, do you think that that food contains the nutrients that you need? Quite literally, is that who you want to be? Well, if your answers to those questions are no or I'm not certain, now's the time to get certain. It's time to start consistently feeding your body with what it needs to build the new you you want to become. All right, let's get into it. So what should you eat? Well, as I mentioned before, it's not that complicated. And once you gain this knowledge, it'll be absolute. You'll know it forever. Let's take a look at the Body for Life authorized protein food list. On that list, you've got chicken, okay? Grilled chicken breast, baked chicken breast, broiled chicken breast, as long as it doesn't have the skin, it's an excellent source of protein. And remember, just pick a chicken breast that's the size of the palm of your hand. That's a portion. Okay, another type of protein food that's A-OK -okay on the Body for Life list is fish. Salmon, trout, tuna, halibut, cod, any type of fish that's not deep fat fried and that's not covered in sauces is a good quality protein food. Okay, here's another good quality protein food. Low fat or non-fat cottage cheese. Another good quality source of protein is egg whites or egg substitutes like egg beaters. And believe it or not, you can even eat red meat, beef, buffalo, or venison. These are lean meats that are high in amino acid content and contain very good nutrients for the body. Just be sure to choose a lean portion of red meat. Okay, now let's take a look at our authorized carbohydrate foods. Okay, at the top of the list is a potato. They're conveniently nature-made in portion sizes. All you do is pick the one that's about the size of your clenched fist, and you're set. Another quality source of carbohydrates that's A-OK -okay on the Body for Life list is steamed brown rice. Now, of course, by steamed, I mean it's not boiled in butter. Another quality carbohydrate is oatmeal. It's inexpensive, it's nutritious, it's easy to make. All you do is combine it with a portion of protein, and you've got a meal. Another quality form of carbohydrates that nature has pre-portioned for us are fruits. An apple, an orange, a peach, a banana. They're all portions of carbohydrates. They're all rich with nutrients, generally portable, and you simply combine them with a portion of protein and you've got a meal. Other authorized carbohydrate foods include sweet potatoes or yams, pasta, barley, and whole wheat bread. Okay, now let me tell you about some of the unauthorized foods on the Body for Life program. Okay, these include french fries, cookies, pie, soda, granola, which is actually very high in fat, even though some people think it's healthy. It's not. Potato chips, sugary cereals, egg yolks, 
and juice. Believe it or not, juice has got way too much carbohydrates and is way too high in calories for our program. You also want to avoid tortilla chips, cheese, crackers, lunch meat, anything fried, brownies, donuts, pastries, bacon, cream sauces. I think you get the idea. It's almost everything that you know isn't good for you, you should be avoiding. And basically, these foods are unauthorized because they're too high in calories and too low in nutrients. The abuse of these types of foods is contributing to an epidemic in this country. An epidemic of heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, premature death. You see, these foods are what most people eat every day. And that's why this country has become the nation of the overfed and the undernourished. You see, we're getting too many calories and not enough nutrition. Okay, so now let's get back to our authorized meals. Every authorized Body for Life meal must contain a portion of protein and carbohydrates. And now that we've taken a look at what some of those foods are, let's take a look at how simple it is to combine them together and make a meal. Okay, you ready? Grilled salmon, pasta. Pretty simple, right? Grilled chicken, brown rice. That's a meal. Throw in a couple glasses of water, you're all set. Top sirloin steak, baked potato. All right? That's a portion of protein, portion of carbohydrates. See how simple this is? Egg whites and oatmeal. That's another one. Roasted turkey and steamed yams. Simple, right? Water-packed tuna and an apple. That's a meal. Cottage cheese and a piece of fruit. Portion of protein, portion of carbohydrates. You see how simple this is? The key here is to not overconsume these foods. A portion is the rule. You don't have to try to keep track of calories. That's not what I'm asking. I'm also not asking you to completely eliminate fat from your diet. That's not what this program is about. You do need to consume a low-fat diet, but some fat is necessary in order to keep your body healthy. That includes safflower oil, sesame oil, canola oil, fish oils. You can get it in avocados, you can get some of it in peanut butter, and you can get some in what's called flaxseed oil. These types of nutrients provide essential fatty acids that your body needs. In addition to eating protein and carbohydrates and some essential fatty acids each day, we also need a consistent intake of vitamins and minerals. One of the best sources of those is vegetables. And the ones I recommend are low enough in calories and high enough in nutrients that you can actually eat all you want. These include spinach, broccoli, tomatoes, carrots, cauliflower, celery, cucumbers, green beans, squash, asparagus, cabbage, or mushrooms. Now these are the types of things that you can combine with a protein and carbohydrate food. Okay, let me give you an example. Here's a meal. Grilled chicken, baked potato, and spinach. Here's another one. Broiled salmon, brown rice, steamed broccoli. A piece of lean red beef, like a top sirloin steak, and a baked potato, and a salad with tomatoes and mushrooms. Okay, this is very simple, but once again, it's a very important part of the Body for Life program. As I've already mentioned, the key to the nutrition method that I teach is that you have to eat six times a day. Now that's roughly a meal every two and a half or three hours. Now, I realize this can get a little bit expensive and it can be a little time consuming, but there's a solution to that. There's a method which saves time and money while helping take your guesswork out of eating right. It involves using a high-tech nutrition shake called Myoplex. I call it the complete performance nutrition solution because it helps you overcome so many of the challenges that you might face when you start the Body for Life program especially if you're not used to eating frequently, if you're not used to eating high nutrient meals day in and day out. You see, Myoplex is simple. It's a powder you simply mix with water in a shaker or a blender, and in less than a minute, you can create a super shake. It's like a nutritious milkshake without the fat, but with all the nutrients your body needs. Hey, think of it this way. Let's say you took a grocery cart full of healthy whole foods, such as lean meat, fruits, vegetables, dairy products, and you extracted all the valuable nutrients, all the good things your body needs, and you put them in one place, and you took all the leftover junk, the excess calories, the saturated fat, and you got rid of it. Then if you took all the good stuff and combined it in precise ratios, what you would have is a custom-designed food, a precise formula that offers the positive biochemical effects of food without the negative. That's what Myoplex is, a high-tech fast food for the 21st century, a scientific solution to the problem of eating right. It's a food that starves fat while feeding your muscles. I've used Myoplex as a foundation of my nutrition program for the past few years. Most days I consume three Myoplex shakes and three whole food meals. Six meals right there. This helps take the guesswork out of eating right, and it also saves time, which I know is a factor for many people, a big factor. Because I use Myoplex every day, 
I don't have to invest a lot of money in extra vitamin pills or minerals. Myoplex has got all that stuff I need. It's so nutritionally complete, it's like 10 supplements in one. Although I do recommend Myoplex, which is a performance nutrition supplement, I'm not recommending any other supplements at this time. You see, that's not what this program is about. It's about mastering the basics, the tried and true techniques. It's about crossing the abyss, discovering what to eat and when to eat it. The reason I introduced Myoplex at this time is because I believe it's a solution to some of the problems that people face early on in this program, especially people who are not used to eating this way. So until you master the basics, don't get bogged down with trying to figure out any other issues about supplements. If you follow the information in this program, you will succeed. Then you can look at what you want to do from there, possibly taking it to the next level by adding other performance nutrition supplements. But for now, let's keep it simple. All right, you might be a little apprehensive at this point about entering into a 12-week program with nothing more than chicken breasts, salads, steamed broccoli, nutrition shakes, and grilled fish. Well, I've got a little surprise for you at this point, and it's something I call free day. And here's the way that works. Six days a week, you follow the guidelines that we've been discussing. Protein, carbohydrates, authorized lists, nutrition shakes. But on the seventh day, I want you to forget about them. I mean, forget about them all and eat whatever you want. If you want to eat blueberry pancakes for breakfast and a cinnamon roll with coffee, if you want a Big Mac for lunch, a thick pizza for dinner, be my guest. There's actually a very important physiological reason for this. You see, it may help your body convince it that it's not starving. Giving yourself that one big feed a week can actually calm the thousands of year old genetic alarms that go off when your brain senses that it's not getting enough food and you're burning stored body fat. One of the things that I've learned by working hands-on with real people over the years is that when you say to somebody, all right, you're looking at 12 weeks with absolutely no french fries, no pizza, no hamburgers, not even a marshmallow, you've just invaded that person's circle of choice. Most people need to know that they have some degree of autonomy, and that's what the free day is. The freedom to be yourself, the freedom to eat what you want or not eat what you want, no exercise on that day, no supplements, and no rules. Now, if you don't take this free day, I gotta warn you, you might be setting yourself up for failure. Remember how I told you earlier that you should never invent a game you can't win? If you say, I'm not gonna eat a single thing that I shouldn't for the next 12 weeks, that's like Michael Jordan going into a ball game and saying, I'm not gonna miss a single shot today. Another good thing about the free day is that I've discovered it serves the purpose of reminding people what every day was like when every day was a free day. It can keep you in touch with what you're trying to get away from which is a sluggishness, indigestion, bloating, and all the fun stuff that goes with eating the way most Americans eat. Okay, now let's move on to exercise. Let's answer those questions that I'm so often asked, such as what type of exercise should I do? When should I do it? How should I do it? When, where, and why? As you're about to discover, somewhat like our nutrition method, our exercise system is very basic. Even though I could show you literally hundreds of exercises to work the different muscles in your body, it's just not necessary. All you need to do is learn how to use free weight barbells and dumbbells. Basic exercises like the bench press, the shoulder press, barbell curls, dumbbell curls, lunges, side raises, these basic exercises work every major muscle of your body and they do it very efficiently and very safely. Please don't be distracted by the fact that many of today's Vegas-like high-tech fitness facilities are equipped with hundreds of pieces of exercise machines, some with flashing lights, some with computer readouts, all types of bells and whistles. You know, some of those machines actually work, but you know what, some don't. Which do, which don't, I don't know. It's guesswork, it's trial and error. It's the antithesis of the Body for Life program. You see, this program is based on fundamental truths, principles that work for every person. There's no guesswork in this program, and if you follow it to the letter, you will get the results you want. Because the Body for Life program only includes basic free weight exercises, you can do it at a home gym. In fact, all you really need is a set of adjustable dumbbells and an exercise bench, which you can buy at any sporting goods store. You know, over the years, I've tried just about everything, but I've always come back to dumbbells. In fact, a good old-fashioned set of dumbbells is probably the best exercise equipment you can own. They're safe. You can do dozens of different exercises with just two dumbbells. You can keep them in your house, out of the way, and they work all the major muscles. Even though the Body for Life program involves only basic weight training exercises, I'd like to point out that it's not so much what you do, it's how you do it that makes the difference. I've developed a new technique that truly transforms ordinary basic weight training into an extraordinary experience. It's called the high point technique, and we use it to create what I call moments that matter. 
These are moments that produce a great outcome, where your energy is at its best, where you're completely focused. High points are moments of synchronicity where everything comes together, and you reach higher than you've ever reached. When you do something you've never been able to do before, it's those moments that produce major results. It's those moments that define who and where you are. Okay, let me give you an example. Hey, do you have a scrapbook with photos of yourself and your family in it? If so, what exactly do you have in there? Do you have pictures of yourself getting dressed in the morning? A snapshot of you tying your shoe or driving to work? Well, I know, maybe you've got photos of yourself sitting at your desk shuffling through papers. Grocery shopping? Probably not. My guess is that your scrapbook is filled with pictures that reflect special moments, that reflect high points. Standing on the top of a mountain peak, your child's first step, your wedding day, a vivid smile on a loved one's face that makes you smile and gives you energy just thinking about it. They're all high points, right? Think about it. Superman's super moments are his high points. The rest, his life as Clark Kent, is pretty forgettable. For athletes like Joe Montana, Michael Jordan, John Elway, Mark McGuire, the moments that define their greatness are their high points. I'm sure you've got the picture by now, because it's really not a hard concept to grasp. Unfortunately, most people aren't consciously aware of the power of high points, so it's impossible for them to create moments that matter. The high points most people experience occur randomly, almost by accident, and that's not good. For our workouts to create major results fast, we must not only learn to recognize high points, we must learn how to create them. Once you develop the skill to intentionally create high points, you can not only experience greater results in the gym, but you can enjoy your life more. This is a tool that you can use anywhere. Now what I've discovered is that many fitness experts recommend a completely different approach. And they say as soon as you can work out for 30 minutes comfortably, you should go to 40, then 60, then 90. More is better, they insist. My question to them is why? What's the objective? To eventually work out all day? Gosh, I guess that sounds great if that's what you do for a living, but I was kind of hoping I could get in shape and have a life. The fact of the matter is, as you become more experienced, as your level of expertise in whatever it is you're doing, including exercise, advances, the objective is to continually reach higher, not just further. You see, once you develop that skill, once you develop the ability to create higher and higher high points, you will not only experience continual progress, you'll be downright unstoppable. And that's what keeps you growing. That's what keeps you excited. That's what keeps you feeling alive. These moments create momentum. And once you get that process started, you'll start making breakthroughs you never imagined. That's the power of the high point technique. And that's why I do not recommend that you work out for hours and hours on end. We set up, we prime our minds, we prepare our bodies, we focus and we create a high point. Remember that the goal of our workout is to produce a result. We're trying to stimulate an adaptation response. We're trying to stimulate the muscles. Well, guess what? Studies show that the stimulation required to signal muscle growth happens fast or not at all. Hence the maxim, you can work out hard or long. It's one or the other. Also keep in mind that the body has a limited ability to recover from physical activity. Therefore, if you continue to engage in moderate or low intensity exercise, after you hit the high point, you will be short circuiting your progress because you'll be overextending your body's ability to recover. It's imperative that you realize a high point is just that. It's a point. It's not a plateau. It's not a level place you can get to. You can't maintain a high point. You can only be there for an instant. When people tell me this is what they do, I ask them if they turn on a light twice when they go in a room. Once you hit the switch, you're done. And if you flip the switch twice, it doesn't get any brighter. This is why I insist that on each of your workouts you perform only a few bursts of maximally intense exercise. These sets will be challenging. And each week I will ask you to raise the bar another notch, to push yourself to a higher point. I'm not asking for your best effort, folks. I want more than that, and so do you. And I believe the perception of what you think your best effort is is a self-imposed limitation. I believe you are capable of much more than you realize. And now is the time to shatter those false barriers and discover your true hidden potential. On the Body for Life program, we use a tool called the Intensity Index to help us measure and create high points. The index starts with a level one and goes to a level 10. At level one, you've got the intensity of, oh, sitting down watching TV on a couch, Level two might be standing, level three might be walking, level four might be carrying a couple bags of groceries, 
level five might be you know, carrying those bags up a flight of stairs, and so on, up to level 10, which is an all out 100% focused effort. The proper use of the intensity index makes the Body for Life training program, by design, self-regulating. That's because your high point is yours. It's unique to you. For example, when you begin this program, you might only be able to bench press 30 pounds for 12 reps. That's your high intensity effort. Someone who's been training for several years might be able to bench press 185 pounds for 12 reps. That's their high intensity effort. As you adapt and evolve, so does this system. In fact, you can never outgrow it. But it's very important that you become aware of what your high points are. You see, a true high point in this workout, a true level 10 experience, is one where you can honestly tell yourself that you gave it every single last ounce of energy that you had, that you tapped into your inner strength. What I think you'll discover is that a true high point comes from your mind, not your muscles. After you finish a high intensity set during this workout, and before you write down in your journal whether you achieved a level eight, level nine, or level 10 experience, you need to answer this question. Could you have done one more rep if I were standing right there, encouraging you to reach even higher, to push yourself further? If your honest answer to that question is no way, then congratulations, you scored a 10. However, if your answer was something along the lines of, oh, maybe I could have done another one, then you're probably looking at a nine, which is a solid effort. I want you to celebrate that progress, but I also want you to plan to try harder next time. Now, I want to point out that you won't reach a high point every time you try. That would be like a quarterback going into a football game and expecting to throw a touchdown pass every time you touch the ball. You see, a high point is kind of like a touchdown pass or a home run. It's a challenge, which is why it's a worthwhile goal. Very few of the high points you hit in your life are going to be easy. But now that you're aware of the high point concept, you'll be able to deliberately start to create those moments, those moments that matter, those moments that produce maximum results in a minimum amount of time. Okay, now I wanna tell you about something I call the 20 minute aerobic solution. This is a technique that is also part of the Body for Life program. It's a system where we use the high point technique and the intensity index to transform ordinary aerobics into an extraordinary event. The 20 minute aerobic solution is self-regulating and evolutionary. That means no matter what your present condition, you're ready for the 20 minute aerobic solution. And it also means you can never outgrow it. Despite what many millions of people have been told, Low intensity, long duration, boring aerobic exercise is not the best method for getting rid of excess body fat. You see, research indicates that not only does high intensity training burn more fat more effectively than low intensity exercise, up to 50% more efficiently in fact, it also speeds up your metabolism and keeps it revved up for about an hour after the workout. So when you're using the 20 minute aerobic solution, forget about the calorie burned readout on the stair step or a stationary bike. You see on this program, the majority of calories will be burned up after your workouts, provided you don't eat for an hour. To further enhance the fat burning effects of these workouts, try doing them in the morning before you eat. Scientific studies from Sweden show that you can burn fat up to three times faster that way. Now I'd like to point out that a high intensity effort on the 20 minute aerobic solution doesn't necessarily mean an all out sprint. For some an intense effort might just mean walking up a hill. And if that's the case, don't get discouraged but you must continually try to achieve a higher and higher level of performance or you never will. You'll get stuck in the comfort zone and your body will not be forced to adapt. Therefore, even though you might be working out regularly, you won't get results. And that's what happens to so many people who follow standard exercise routines, routines that are actually self-limiting by design. By that, I mean they don't provide you with a plan or a path that is unique to you. They don't provide you with a way to constantly improve. What many exercise routines actually do is train you to stay the same. That is actually the opposite of what we're trying to do with this program. We're trying to change. Those old fashioned exercise programs don't allow you to evolve. They're static. They're stuck. They're always the same. Now, why would somebody who wants to change follow an exercise program that's self-limiting? It doesn't make any sense to me, and I hope it doesn't make any sense to you. And when you apply the high point technique to your weight training and your aerobics, I guarantee you'll never get stuck. There's no such thing as a plateau in this program. We use the intensity index and the high point technique to do what I call interval training. That means you start out with a relatively slow pace and you work yourself up, priming, setting up, reaching at about the four minute mark in your aerobic session, and then you scale it back down. And then you increase gradually and you reach again at about the 10 minute mark. Then you come back down. And then you reach again at 15, back down. Then you reach again at minute 19. 
and that's the one that's your highest high point. You try to go for 10 on that one. If you'd like a copy of the exact charts I recommend to people I'm teaching the high point technique to, be sure to check out our webpage at www.bodyforlife.com. It's your energetic link to the new global community of people who've decided to change. It's a great place to get more information on the Body for Life training program. Okay, now let's take a look at the Body for Life training principles. First, we weight train approximately 45 minutes three times a week. I do it on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next, we do 20 minutes of aerobic exercise first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. I do that on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. We use the intensity index to create high points in our workouts. We only focus on the fundamentals. We use free weights, barbells, and dumbbells, and we don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Okay, now we've reached the point where we're ready to put it all together. And you've done a great deal of thinking so far. You've answered questions most people never even ask. You've tapped into those deep down dreams. You've turned them into goals. You've transformed patterns of action. You've decided to support people along with you. And you've decided to let the next 12 weeks serve as a defining moment in your life. The 12-week journey you're about to begin with your body is merely a gateway to the rest of your life, a life of rewarding and fulfilling moments. Within 12 weeks, you will discover that the transformation you've created with your body is merely an example of the power you have to change anything in your world. And you know what? You're not alone. People everywhere are discovering this. They're feeling it. They're living it. People are discovering that they do have the power to change, that they do have the ability to create not only a better body, but a better life. If you only remember two messages that lie at the foundation of this program, remember these. The more you create value for others, the more you reach out and give to make their lives better, the stronger and richer your own life will become in every way. Next, you can take control of your life and change it, beginning with your body, but only beginning there. These two principles are guiding the revolution, the evolution that is taking place. And that's something that goes far beyond physical fitness. Each day I read thousands of letters, cards, faxes, and email from ordinary men and women who've become extraordinary by using this program. I meet them everywhere I go. They are my teachers, each and every one of them. They've lifted me higher than I ever dreamed I could rise, and they've inspired me to reach even higher, to achieve my goal of helping one million people transform their bodies and lives by the last day of the year 2001. That means my goal is to help you achieve your goal to help you become your absolute best, to help you build your one and only body for life. So now it's your turn. You've got the formulas, you know the techniques, you've learned the principles, but I realize you might be thinking, I'm gonna do it. I've just gotta wait until I'm ready. Well, here's a tip. Don't make the mistake of waiting until you feel ready. Don't fool yourself into believing that now is just too soon. If you wait until everything is just perfect in your life before you start this program, you'll be waiting forever. The longer you wait before you put the Body for Life program to work for you, the longer you delay the rewards which are rightfully yours. And those rewards, as you'll soon discover, have been there all along. You just never had the keys to unlock them. Well, I'm handing you those keys. The time to use them isn't soon, it's now. There's only one last thing I'd like you to promise me before we embark on this 12-week transformation process. I'd like you to promise me and yourself that you'll write me when you're finished and tell me what's begun. I'm Bill Phillips, and I thank you for listening, and I welcome you to our championship team. Once you've achieved these kind of results, you don't ever want to let it go. You don't want to give it up after you have experienced what it feels like to have the physique that you've always wanted. It's my life now. It's a lifestyle for me now, so I can't see ever slipping back. This physique transformation has changed changed my life more than anyone can imagine. Right now, I couldn't be a happier person. Anybody can do this, and nobody can convince me that they can't. My life has not been the same, and the dream continues. The bottom line, you'll make some transformation. You cannot do this for three months and not physically change their body. Not to mention that the benefit that they get uh, of self-esteem, of self-worth, and after 60 years, I am finally able to take control of my body. The one thing that this program has done for me is to help me reach one of my goals in life, and that is to die young at a very old age.